Unbelievable picture. This scenario nobody saw coming. Canada, a nation that's relied on American defense tech for decades, suddenly becomes a fighter jet manufacturer for NATO itself. Not the F-35, not Lockheed Martin. We're talking Griffin, Sweden's fighter jet, built right in Ontario, stamped made in Canada, and sold to Poland, Romania, maybe even Germany. Sounds like science fiction, but if this happens, it completely rewrites the rules for the Western Alliance. The question isn't whether Canada could pull it off, it's what happens to the world if they do. To understand this scenario, we need to look at where things stand right now. According to the Auditor General of Canada's report from June 2025, F-35 program cost jumped from $19 billion to $27.7 billion. CAD could hit $33 billion when you factor in infrastructure. This isn't just a budget problem, this is a crisis of confidence. Defense experts say Ottawa is facing a paradox, spending more but controlling less. Every F-35 component depends on a global supply chain coordinated by Lockheed Martin. Every software upgrade needs Pentagon approval. Every maintenance decision follows Washington's procedures. Now imagine in this context, a group of Ottawa officials asks a radical question. If we're spending $30 billion, why not invest in technology we can control? If we're building factories, why not build them to manufacture our own aircraft? And from there, a bold plan starts taking shape. In this hypothetical scenario, Ottawa makes an unprecedented decision. Instead of buying 88 F-35s, Canada signs with Sweden's Saab to produce Gripen E right in Canada. Not imports, not simple assembly, full technology transfer from engine design to electronic warfare systems to advanced composite manufacturing processes. International analysts might call this the deal of the century. Sweden gets a new production partner in North America. Canada gets back the military aviation industry it lost in the late 1950s when the CF-105 Aero program got cancelled amid controversy. But that's just the beginning. What shocks the world isn't Canada building planes for itself, it's Clause 2 in this hypothetical contract. Canada gets export rights for grant to other NATO countries. Bombardier and CAE, industrial giants, suddenly aren't just subcontractors anymore. They become official weapons manufacturers. If this scenario plays out, this goes way beyond a typical procurement deal. Defense observers suggest Canada and Sweden could establish a sovereign sustainment model meaning Ottawa doesn't just assemble aircraft, they control the entire value chain, from production to maintenance. Picture a factory in Ontario, Canadian engineers working alongside Saab specialists to build composite airframes. The engines, not Pratt & Whitney from the US, Rolls-Royce from Britain, a partner Canada negotiate with directly as the radar and electronic warfare systems. Swedish technology, but customized and upgraded right in Montreal by CE's teams. The most important part? Source code. While the F-35 is a black box that only Lockheed Martin holds the keys to, Gribben's designed with an open philosophy. If Canada needs to adjust software for Arctic conditions, they can do it themselves. No permission needed from Washington. But that's the beautiful theory. Reality could be way more complicated. Let's say this scenario becomes real. Canada would witness an industrial revolution not seen since World War II. Economic experts estimate a grip in production line could create 15,000 to 20,000 direct jobs. Aviation engineers, specialized welders, defense software experts. Bombardier, the company that once built CF-100 Cuck fighters but then left defense, could have a comeback. SEMA, currently leading the world in flight simulation, wouldn't just be a subcontractor anymore. They'd become a tech partner on equal footing with Saab. Pratt & Whitney Canada, which only makes civilian engines, now could expand into military. But here's a detail most people miss. Supply chain. If Canada wants to build Griffin, they need to construct an entire supplier network, aviation-grade aluminum to military electronic components, this means hundreds of small and medium businesses would get upgraded to NATO standards, creating a complete defense industrial ecosystem. This isn't just about economics, this is about technological sovereignty. Now, for the most interesting part of this scenario, 
If Canada successfully produces Griffin, what happens to other NATO countries looking for F-35 alternatives? Defense analysts suggest at least three groups of nations might be interested. First, Eastern European countries like Poland and Romania, nations ramping up defense but with limited budgets. According to publicly available defense reports, green operating costs run about $8,000 per flight hour. Compare that to $35,000 to $47,000 for the F-35. For these countries, made in Canada, green could be the perfect solution. Second, Nordic nations wanting to diversify their supply sources. Finland just joined NATO, but they've always valued defense autonomy. If Canada proves it can produce independently, Helsinki might consider a North American partner instead of relying entirely on Europe. Third, and this is the most shocking part, some NATO countries still flying old F-16s might want upgrades without getting locked into the F-35 program. They see an opportunity. Stop for a second and realize how extraordinary this scenario is. Canada, a nation that's always seen itself as a peaceful middle power, suddenly becomes a heavy weapons exporter, not ammunition or armored vehicles. We're talking fourth generation plus fighter jets. International strategy researchers ask the question, is Canada ready for this role? If Poland orders 48 made in Canada Griffins, Ottawa would need to establish weapons export control agencies negotiate technology transfer terms, and most importantly, take political responsibility when these aircraft see combat. Economically, the opportunity is massive. Industry analysts estimate that if Canada sells 200 Griffins to NATO over the next two decades, revenue could hit 25 to 30 billion CAD. That's steady cash flow, long-term job creation, and more importantly, keeping high-tech talent in Canada instead of losing them to the US. But every coin has two sides, and the other side is geopolitics. This is where the hypothetical scenario gets most tense. If Canada actually produces and exports Griffin to NATO, how does Washington react? International relations observers suggest the response could come from multiple levels. First is Lockheed Martin, a corporation that just lost a 19 billion CAD contract and now has to watch a European competitor grab NATO market share. They could lobby Congress, warn about defense interoperability risks, or weakening the technology alliance. Next is the Pentagon. For over seven decades, the US has built NATO's defense ecosystem around American technology. From Link 16 to IIF, friend or foe identification systems, if a significant portion of NATO switches to Gripen, interoperability could take a hit. But there's another some American strategists might quietly support this. Why? Because if Canada shoulders part of NATO's defense burden, Washington can focus resources on the Pacific, where confronting China is the top priority. Geopolitics is never simple. Let's say this scenario plays out over the next two decades. Canada would face a profound transformation, not just in defense, but a national identity. Political economists analyze that an independent defense industry could shift the Canada-US trade balance. Instead of importing tens of billions of dollars in weapons, Ottawa could become a net exporter, not just to NATO, but to partners like Australia, Singapore, even Gulf states looking to diversify suppliers. But this is also a double-edged sword. If Canada becomes an arms exporter, they'll face ethical questions. Who do we sell weapons to? Under what conditions? When a Made in Canada Grepin shows up in a conflict, how much responsibility does Ottawa bear? Plus, maintaining a defense industry requires continuous R&D investment. If the next generation of Grepin needs upgrades, does Canada have the capability to develop it independently, or does it still depend on Sweden? Technological independence is a journey, not a destination. So we've walked through an entire scenario that's never happened, but also can't be ruled out as never happening. If Canada actually produces Gripen and sells to NATO, it doesn't just shift the North American defense balance, it rewrites the definition of technological sovereignty in the 21st century. It proves that a middle power can still break free from a superpower's orbit if they have the determination. But the final question isn't, can Canada do this? It's this. If they can, are they willing to accept the price politically, economically, and ethically? This is a hypothetical scenario, but the questions it raises are real. Thanks for watching.
If this video made you think, hit like and subscribe. We'll keep uncovering the stories others won't tell. This video presents a completely hypothetical scenario and does not reflect actual policy or plans of any government, organization, or corporation. All analysis is based on publicly available sources and is for illustrative research purposes.